Today on The Crunch, we want to introduce something a little bit different. Our new project, Off Market. Released fortnightly, Off Market is a look at the Perth property market from the people who are working in the trenches. Join me, Shane Beaumont, Ross Hunter and a special guest each fortnight as we dissect the latest property news. Keep listening now for our first episode and please let us know your thoughts. And if you'd rather watch the show, you can find us on our Facebook page at Crib Creative Perth on Thursday nights. Off market, where every week we're going to be breaking down the Perth property market. Now, the media might be telling us that there's one Perth property market, some weeks it's up, some weeks they say it's down, but here we're talking to agents who are saying there are hundreds of different markets throughout Perth um, and they're all performing really differently. So that's what we're breaking down for you guys every fortnight. Now, of course, I'm the one that asked the questions, but I am no expert. So we've got our experts back on the panel, Shane and Roscoe. Welcome back. Thanks, Jess. Episode yes. three. How's Episode your week been? Three. Great. Been around the country, so been very positive. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. So Melbourne, Adelaide, back here, get a pulse of things. Melbourne, all the all the agents over there are a bit depressed because they said the market was diving. Three months later, it's taken off again. <laughs> yeah. poor, poor darlings. We've heard, heard it all. So the interesting thing about Melbourne, you know, there's more cranes on the skyline of Melbourne. It's I crazy. Think there, is, there is collectively in the whole of Australia. So that's going well. Adelaide has been very similar to Perth, but even Adelaide's sort of starting to get some oxygen. Like us, they're their um, vacancy rates have dropped sub 2%. Mm. Rentals are increasing. Like our economic clock last week is showing that's the first real strong point of recovery. So really interesting things to, to feel around what's going on in the country. Yeah. Excellent. Very interesting. Shane, mm. you've had a good week? Very busy week. I was in the southwest on the weekend. Had a rare weekend off. Gourmet Escape, which is fantastic. And I had a busy week with Ari Barkamp, which we was did. fantastic. You guys did a very star good show job. over here. No, no, you guys were the star of the sure. show. So that was awesome. And then... Yeah, here we are. Here we are again. Episode three, beautiful. So this week we're having a bit of a western suburbs focus. We're going to be and we're going to be shining the light on Subi later in the show. Um, But for now, first up, we've got Under the Hammer with Roscoe. You've got some auction results to share with us. uh, What I love about Under the Hammer today, Jesse, we've got Nikki from. (laughs) Property Exchange, <laughs> who's one of the strongest auction advocates I've ever met. So oh, I'm just looking for Nikki to jump on board and go, God, I love these auctions. So yeah, that's how to feel under the hammer. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, look, probably one I want to highlight, an auction I did um, in the weekend in Kareem. Once mm-hmm. again, today's a Western suburb, it's a bit of a focus, but it's also really important that we get a balance of what's going on everywhere. And Kareem's, a, you know, it's, it's a good, solid marketplace. Um, and why I highlight this particular property, these people bought this probably three years ago for $880,000 and mm-hmm. we sold it under the hammer, Nikki, with multiple bidders. Unbelievable. But three years later, just to test the market, for $879,000. So only $1,000 difference in, wow. in a market that, you know, some, you know, there's been a lot of movement. So I think that's just a, it's a really great story for all of us to have in our, in our arsenal mm-hmm. when we're talking to people that that's the sort of recovery we are seeing that, in three years, we're you know we're back to those levels. So I think it's just probably the really depth. Positive. The depth of bidder there is probably what was yeah. also yeah. a really good sign three, of confidence. Three people, yeah. you know, th- strong bidding, you know, great family market, etc. Obviously, the school zoning thing because it's in Korean school, um, high school zone, which is obviously a really really strong driver of properties now. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was a really positive story to to take out of the the auction results as as much as there were, were many. But that's just more not only the auction itself, but just a really good test of the market, Jess. And I, I look awesome. forward to that. Beautiful, good positive note to start things off on. Yeah. We're going to move straight into the real press. Yeah. Now, Roscoe, again, you've sent me a bit of a Western Suburbs spring market update here yeah. Yeah. with some pretty interesting numbers in there. Yeah. Um, that we want to go through. I guess some of the key figures that jumped out to me, and I'm sure you'll jump in, but um, the percentage of the stock on the market in Pebby Grove has halved in the last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Swanbourne days on market are down to 36 from yeah. a high of 150 yeah. in December 2016. Right. Yeah. Um, and Cottesloe prices are up 7.8% year on year. Yeah. Swanbourne yep. up 8.5. So yep. there's some good, pretty good numbers there. Shane's looking shocked by that. So, so that's a big change. It's I'm a not big sure change, whether, isn't it? Would some of the apartment groups Look, that's area, take, would that... Yeah, it probably takes everything yeah. into, into the whole. Yeah. But at the end of the day, probably the, for me, Jess, one of, some of the big takeaways of that... Um, is once again breaking down this whole thing where people talk about the Perth market. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's like let's start isolating and looking at postcodes or looking at suburbs and, and looking for those stories that are giving some some evidence 
that there is recovery. Then the peppermint mm. grove one really does interest me. Obviously, it's a it's um, medium price in peppermint grove is has gone from um, three point four million to four million dollars in over the last twelve months. You know, medium average oh, price. So Sydney that, growth. That, that, that's, yeah. sig <laughs> that's significant. Um, but what it says to us is that you know markets off. They ever like a lot of things. They start at the top and mm. they sort of trickle down. Now we've seen a lot of off-market tra off transactions in those marketplaces, but that just says there's confidence for people mm. to transact, and people to start moving money around. Mm -hmm. So as much as people say, "Oh yeah, but that's not realistic to the rest of the market," well, it's actually really significant because mm. that's that's where the, the ball starts rolling from. So I think it's pretty important that everybody understands mm. what's going on in those. Mm -hmm. If they're having to chew into the supply that's not on the market because there's not enough that's actually there, mm. again, that is a really good sign for confidence. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you know, it's and it's like the, the rental market we talk about. The executive rental market is very strong. People are coming into play. So you know, we're all positive signs. So mm. does that have a roll-on effect to the, the the outer areas of Perth? Does that kind of do? You, are you expecting that? To I believe so. But you know, Shane's in the. the yeah. The, the real extremities mm. of that, but you know, he might. Yeah, so I, I think um, the high, I guess they say it starts from the bottom as far as chewing through the oversupply of the investors being there. This week alone, I had three inquiries on one property and only one from a WA based, I guess, buyers actually mm -hmm. for themselves. So when you start to get those, the investors start to compete with first home buyers, that's a really good sign too that they feel the timing is right. Yeah. Um, just on that, I guess one thing we're really noticing is a lot of people want to get into the market entry level um, and probably a one in four ratio. I mentioned to them, look, have you looked at Keystart? And them saying, what's Keystart? Oh, I'm not I'm not a first home buyer, which is a bit of a myth that you have to be a first home buyer to use Keystart or mm -hmm. shared equity. Mm -hmm. So I'd really like to see Keystart maybe market, and I don't know the people at Keystart, but I'd love to see them maybe get their market and hitting that demographic that aren't aware of it. Because yep. I think that's going to bring a lot of people into the marketplace and probably chew through those investor properties that are sitting there, some pain that they brought a few years ago. And I think that'll also, along with the higher end moving, mm. can start to get rid of that stock that's just been sitting yeah. there for a while, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So um, people are confusing Keystart with maybe first home buyers. First home buyers, uh, have shared to equity. Buy in with the government. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but um, look, the products, I'm not plugging the product, but it has a place for it. No mm. LMI is a big one. 2% um, deposit. deposit. Yeah. People just aren't aware of it. So I'd love to see those people that want to buy, who want just can't, mm. don't think there's an option. Be aware of it, and then yeah, I think that really changed the marketplace. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. oh. once again, with rentals increasing, mm. affordability, they could they're going you know, to do for something. What they have to pay in rent, they can own their own property. And yeah. Some of these devices are fantastic. And mm -hmm. there's an interesting article was actually on Today Show talking about all the suburbs across Australia that it's cheaper to actually buy a property than mm -hmm. rent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and they singled out a lot of some in Perth, four or five, but there's a lot more than that. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you know. A lot more than that, definitely, at the moment. So. There you go. The real press. We want to see more information about Keystart. Absolutely. Don't we? Yep. Beautiful. All right, guys. That was short and sweet and lots well, of great you, you info. You gave us the word. Come I know. on, let's keep it moving. <laughs> so we're, just, we're just compliant sort of guys, aren't we? I don't think you listen to me so. as much as you do, but I like that. I like it. So from one, I guess, area of the Western Suburbs to another, our week, our, our guest this week um, is an absolute Subiaco specialist. If you live in the area, she'll be familiar to you, both from her presence um, in the suburbs as, as the suburbs top rep, um, but also she's a very vocal local resident. We're, hash we're, we're copywriting that term today. Uh, vocal <laughs> local resident of the suburb. She's a frequent contributor to the local newspaper with her column. Um, we'd like to welcome Nikki Pinecat to Off Mark. Yay! Yay! She sachets across the, uh, the floor. Sachet? Is that a good sachet? Very good sachet. I never Beautiful. learned sacheting. <laughs> So Nikki, that. you've been selling in Subi since 1988, <coughs> so it doesn't get much more expert than that, does it? Well, that's a nice way of saying it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, we've heard your credentials. We would love you to tell us where the supermarket is, I guess, at the moment, in, as opposed to what we were just talking about with further west. Yes. What's, um, what's Subi looking like? Well, Subi, um, being in a city, Subi is kind of pretty closeted in, in cotton wool in that it's... Um, it's always popular. Subi's always been popular. Um, in the good times, it's popular. In the recessions, it's popular. Um, people are upsizing or up, upgrading in the good times and downgrading in the, in the bad times. They, they, it's always doing well, but it, people are just coming from different directions. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty buoyant all the time like that. Um, and there's always buyers for Subi. Um, for, for there's quite a few different sort of properties in Subi, but being a historical area with character homes, it, that's got a huge appeal as well because mm -hmm. 
they're, they're something that's not everywhere in Perth and, you know, everybody loves a bit of history. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. most people love a bit of yeah. history. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We yeah. were chatting, we saw your Ari Bar Camp on Wednesday. Yes, and I think we you were. were. You were saying you don't need auctions because you sell in a day. Is that, is that the... Uh, look, I'm not going to say I, I sell every property in a day. <laughs> Although I've got to say in 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, it was every property in the first half of 2018, so if that's any good. Wow. Um, uh, sorry, every house, not every apartment, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So houses were just going so like different, that. So different markets even within mm -hmm. one side yeah. of them. And last Saturday we saw one day one, and the week before we saw one on day one. Um, and okay, yes, I'm not known to be an auction fan, um, but... I've got my own reasons for that. No. <laughs> Ross is trying to talk me out of it a few times. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I like... It's a very emotional thing um, when people, is, people are buying a house. And when you're... It, and it's a bit of a spontaneous thing. And I just don't like to what pe keep people waiting for a month to decide if they, they can buy it or not buy it. Mm -hmm. So... Is it's a it, quick in the dead in mind. When you're saying that, obviously, I guess across Perth, there's properties do sell in the first week. It, it's a fair indication that it's not how long that property's been on the market, it's how long that buyer's been in the market searching for that type of property. Would you agree? Yeah, uh, well, I've heard that line before. But is it, it's true. Do, I mean, you must um, have, for it to sell on the first day, yeah. there's a good chance if you're an active agent in Subi, you probably would have seen that person come through multiple home opens. Yes, that's, yeah. that's, that's true. And then you see somebody you've never seen before mm. come and buy it. Mm. So, you know, all those things are highly unpredictable. As I say to people, the only thing when you're selling a house you can do is to make it look as good as you possibly mm -hmm. can and put it out there to the market and not restrict it in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. So we do most of our work before it goes on the market mm -hmm. and that's sometimes months work mm -hmm. um, to get a quick result when mm -hmm. it, it does and go I on have, the market. I have heard people mention that, Nika, that you're, which, which all credit to you, is you, it's almost, I, I mean to think about like a slingshot effect. You sort of, you know, pull the slingshot <laughs> yes. back and you do put probably more than most agents I know a, a lot of time into the preparation of the property mm. yep. um, before it goes to market, yep. even if it is, as you say, months or whatever. So by the time it does get to the market, it's 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 it's, it's best possible yep. shape, and which is probably why you get that result. Is there's a lot of people, they, they tend to, I find a lot of agents, they, they panic to get a property on the market. It's a rush job. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, I've got to get the quick deadline instead of saying, hey, well, well, let's just hang on for one or two mm. or three weeks, whatever it is, to yeah. let's get it right, then launch it. We usually yeah. have at least three or four weeks lead time, awesome. depending on the property, obviously. Yeah. Um, but to me, that's that, that's a huge priority in my, mm. it's in it's my frame you, of thinking. We'll say 20 plus years yeah. to learn the process to sell a property in a day. Yeah, look, I won't say it took me all that time, <laughs> but but close to, I learned very, very early on um, that putting, because people don't actually buy houses, they buy looks, they buy emotions, right. they <laughs> buy, um, if you can get all the senses reacting in a positive way, people often buy houses that there's nothing like what they thought they were looking for, but, mm. you know, you ask it them why they bought them. that, mm. you know, you thought you yeah, didn't yeah. want a busy road, and they go, I know, but I just walked in, it just felt right. So mm. we try and make every house we sell feel right mm. to every bar. Yeah. I'm interested really quickly in Subi as a whole, and yeah. as, a, um, as a, I guess, a township almost. Yeah. There's been lots, you know, in the last few years about Subi, the retail rental prices and how that's kind of yeah. affecting the vacancy rate. Yeah. Mm. Um, had, did, did, does that affect the property market? Um, to a point, yes, but I don't think that's just for Subi. That that's happening mm. in every suburb, mm. and Mount Lawley's probably Mount example. Lawley's yeah. suffering the same way. Yeah. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it, it would. It may have some effect, but they're not totally associated in that that way. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of good things were taken out of Subi, which used to be incredibly vibrant before they took all those main attractions. Which the main attractions were the markets and and the movies and the quirky little shops and the eclectic sort of feel of Subi um, was a huge attraction. Now, a lot of those things were taken away and never replaced, and then they wonder why no one comes to Subi anymore. Um, 
some developers have said to me, oh, but we're going to buy, build all these developments will bring, bring people back to Subi. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't believe that units bring people back to Subi. Mm -hmm. Um, what in about fact, one Subiaco? That looks like a pretty incredible development. Yeah. Okay, that one, um, <laughs> that one is is one that I, I will say has has had my backing. Yeah. Uh, and mainly because it has given back to Subi or mm -hmm. is giving back to Subi, uh, in the way that it's bringing back a lot of those things: the sh small shops, the brewery, the mm -hmm. the um, small bars, and the weekend markets. So it's saying, all right, we're going to build all these apartments. However we are going to give something back which is going yep. to attract people yep. to yeah. Subiaco. Mm. Yeah. And it's very much to do with the demographic, which I agree with in, in um, that apartment, uh, in that they're trying to attract downsizers because I had a meeting with Paul early on in the piece and mm. I said, Paul, quite honestly, the only people who really want apartments at the moment are downsizers who have come from big homes and they, mm. they've got <coughs> nowhere to go to, but mm. they don't want little dog boxes. Mm. They want spacious apartments, they want a high level of mm. finish. Mm -hmm. They want the luxury they've been used mm. to yes. and deserve after, you know, working for it all those years. So, um, and then he's put in some fabulous facilities like private dining rooms mm. and things that those people like. So it's a very nice demographic to bring into yeah. to was, um, Subiaco. Would the football oval have of that obviously being disappearing, will that have anything to do with the property market there, do you think? Look, I don't know. I've always been sort of on that, I've said to people, everyone says, oh, you know, the, the football going has ruined me. I'm going like, really, did you, did, did your business depend on one day, two yeah. hours a week? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. a yeah, week yeah, yeah. for six months of the year. Yeah, look, sure, that, that um, there, there was a lot of people coming into Subi at that time, and yes, they were whining and dining and doing things, but it is a very small percentage of, of the time, you know, that was spent in Subi, and most mm -hmm. of them weren't out shopping because they were off to the footy, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And afterwards... Probably the people out of the, t out of the area coming in as opposed to the people in the area enjoying it. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. So um, I don't know, Jewelry's out with me a bit on how that's that's really affected. Hmm. What um, about as Subi the unofficial mayor of Subiaco? I'm anointing you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are they doing with that site? I would never take site? that job. <laughs> Any, um, <laughs> yeah. Any, what are they doing with the site? With the side, yeah, um, it's being well. It's being developed. Obviously, the schools right there beside it. Yeah, um, they. The south. This is e east, east. Uh -huh. Subiaco East. Okay, yeah. So they pretty much demolished the whole. The whole. I was going to say the oval. You can't mm -hmm. demolish an oval, can you? Um, stadium, mm -hmm. and um, they're going to be apartments, and they sort of turn it into a sort of a fancy precinct, mm. um, not unlike what they've done to, to my Sleepy Hollow. Um, in Claremont, around the Claremont Oval there, yeah. where there's now 850 apartments. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, um, yeah, well, I got told off for saying units, so I, I, didn't, oh. <laughs> I had to think about Very that. Polite. Condominiums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, condos, yeah. Condos, that's it. Um, but uh, no, there's going to be uh, apartments there, and then there's a little bit of you know, push and shove about who's going to get to use the oval. It was meant to be public open space, but now, the, you know, yeah. they're saying the school's going to have it between all the daylight hours or something, yeah. so um, you can play on it after school. And so why you don't want to be the mayor? No, no, I don't. <laughs> she just I wants know. to annoy the mayor. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> These Someone, someone's got to like, poke the bear. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> right. Po poke the mayor or the you mayor? You get more done. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. But um, this is Steph Dobro's thing. You get more done being an outsider. Exactly. And I, I, the way I put it is, yeah. I can do more damage on the outside yeah. exactly. than I can on the inside. You're, not, you're constrained by the rules. Because I'm not constrained yeah. by the rules. No. Yeah, you can exactly. Like blow it up. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I mean, I would have been fired long ago if I'd said the things yeah. I've said and uh, done. Nikki, I don't think you would have made morning tea on the first day. No, no, I know. <laughs> I'm quite aware of that. I'm very happy about it. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, any anything? Fi any final questions for our? Yeah. Subiaco Hood Highlight? Yeah, look, I, I, I have, Nikki. Look, you know, once again, coming back to we're all looking for confidence, where where do we all think next year's heading and so forth? And, yeah. and Subi is, is literally the epicentre of, of Perth almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, um, what's your feeling, I mean, about next year? Look, I think, um, well, there's a lot of good things coming back into Subi that haven't been there for a while. Mm. Um, okay, the, the Blackburn development is, is definitely part of that, but that's like two, two years yeah. away, so that's not going to have an impact straight away. But you've got um, the Subi taken over by uh, these, these guys who are going to, I'm, I'm not sure, but they've got a very good track record of, yeah. of restoring and turning things around. So I'm hoping that that 
has a new buzz to it. Yeah. Uh, you've got the movie theatres, which um, we haven't had for eight years or something, mm, ten yeah. years. Um, coming back, we've got the new boutique hotel in Hay Street. Um, and the Witch's Cauldron, which has been taken over. That's exciting. Mm. What are they doing? It's the exciting, except I did go there last night. I didn't think they quite finished it or quite ready to open, but I mean, okay. that's beside the point. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be something really great. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, all these good things coming back are certainly going to create some activity. But um, I do definitely think there's things that have to be done around the retail shops. Yeah. Um, and I've been a big advocate of shop sharing. Um, taxing empty shops, you mm -hmm. know, taxing the landlords yeah. who sit there and for two years they just leave it empty and that obviously okay. doesn't affect them, yeah. um, but it does affect all the other shops around them yeah. and I think they should be taxed for being empty. Yeah. Mm. Very Absolutely. controversial. Subi Hotel but sold recently? Yes. Yeah. What's happening there? Um, two guys, I can't remember their names, um, yeah. they're all Christchurch boys. Yeah. They've restored the Rose in Bunbury and... I didn't know the other hotel, but I've forgotten it. Yeah. Um, and they've had their eyes on the Subi apparently for mm -hmm. a while, so I guess they're going to do great things there. Excellent. Which and it needs that next generation mm. to, to get into Yeah, it, the it? Subi was a bit sad because they spent a lot of money um, on it um, and it, it, its popularity mm. went away after that. Some people like the the old, I mean, they, they closed in all the... the, the um, Courtyard open area. courtyard mm. area, which we all used to go down there mm. on a Friday night. Yeah. Um, it's now got very sort of echoey and a bit bare, and I think yeah. they just lost the atmosphere. Perth likes open air. Mm. Yeah, Perth likes the garden. Yeah, we've yeah. got the weather for it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, the one in Railway Parade, Be uh, Besk. Besk. Oh, you know, the Besk. Pop yeah, that's really popular. I went there the other day. Vibe. It was absolutely packed, Dumpy. and that had a really good it vibe fabulous. to it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we had a long time without any small bars, and I, I love that we've got small bars. It brings a community together. Yeah, great. Um, and Lady of Row, there's another one. Lady of Row, is it? Down the other uh, one? Lady of Row, it's a little restaurant next yeah. to, to um, Winita's. Yeah. 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 Uh, and the Unicorn next to my office is great, too. Yeah, there it is go. good. And there's a great little one called Bark, which hey, I went to last night. You can night. say that in the questions in a minute. Jeez. Just hold the book. She's <laughs> getting ahead of herself. Wrong, wrong food, food, hey? Yeah, we've yeah, been doing a food and wine review now. It's part of the real sorry. estate. <laughs> because we're versatile. Right. Right. Well, well, that yeah, leads exactly. us into our eight questions, Ross. So take okay. away next next. Here we go, segment. Nikki. These are, these are the most important questions of your life. Oh, my God. Okay, first of all. This is lifestyle stuff. So, Nikki, where's the best meal in Perth? Where, where's you, where have you had your best meal in Perth? Okay. Where did you go? Okay. Does it have to be in Subiaco? No, 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 anywhere. Okay. Anyway. I've got to say that the best restaurant in Perth, in my view, is Chez Pierre. Mm. Oh. For absolute value, for the Fantastic. most I'm amazing blow-away service. We go there a lot. and um, okay. The Sleeping Giant. It, yeah. it is fantastic. I mean, you go there any night of the week yeah. and it's packed. Yeah. It's got yeah. uh, Valet? And it's got ballet parking. Of course, yeah. Shane knows there's yeah. ballet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they but drive yeah, you home. Because you yeah, like that upscale stuff. <laughs> but no, um, they, they blow you away for service. The food's fantastic. It's great pricing. It's yeah. BYO Monday to mm. Thursday. Fantastic. So we always That's go very on good. Thursday. You've reminded me now. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, fantastic. I think we need to do the next show then. <laughs> yeah. Come on, if, guys. <laughs> if you've ever seen, I said I watched the movie Burnt the other day. Have you uh, ever seen that? Yeah, that yeah, kitchen one? Oh, my God. I said I'll never be able to go to Shape Here again. And not imagine that that's going on oh, yes. in the I know kitchen what you're now. Yeah. because I they are no, that you don't want they are that professional. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. So Nikki, we believe that um, a lot of the, the greatest learnings in life come from the, the biggest mistakes we've made. So in your life or with business, what's the biggest stuff up you've made? You know, I sat with that question for over an hour, and I, I just couldn't think of one. Okay. Good. Don't I have had some mistakes. embarrassing moments. That's okay. What are they? You want to share those? Well, probably, probably the worst one was when I lost my phone at this at this appraisal, and all the family were there, and um, I realised I couldn't find my phone. So someone said, "Oh, I'll ring it for you," and we could all hear it. And I had the whole house turning to place turning the right. place upside down trying to find my phone because we could all hear it. I'm going like, I went over there, and I went, "It's over there," and then I went over there, "It's over there." And it turned about it was in my boot. <laughs> it explains as in the boot, not your car boot, as in your boot in your foot boot. Boot, it's gone down my boot. 
Okay. It's not on vibrate. She went vibrate. Chris, Chris, I, I, Chris no. we, need, we need a zoom in on the boots. <laughs> no, uh, not these boots, not these boots, but some other boots boot. I had. Okay. <laughs> Right. Sort of a sort of mistake. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Not, yeah, yeah, one of the stuff yeah, up. Yeah, okay. All right, number three. Three things you wouldn't leave home without, Nikki. What wouldn't you leave home without? Okay, well, these days I wouldn't leave home without my clothes. Hmm? Oh, these days. These days. <laughs> these meaning? <laughs> she used to run restaurants and, you know. Well, once upon a time <laughs> I, I could get away with something very... Anyway, um, that's I, I was swear phone was coming then, and, and it just uh, didn't come. <laughs> I couldn't leave home without my contact lenses because that would be that'd be bad. Yeah. That'd be bad. Um, and then my handbag with the whole world in it, so yeah. okay. everything else. Life. Yeah. Handbag. That's yeah. probably pretty yeah. cool. normal. Just imagine you walking down the street with nothing but your handbag. <laughs> Yeah, well, that, uh, I'd be covered for most things, but not for what I'm I, know, I had that Main Street in Osmond Park about a month ago. What? I was Walking driving naked. down Main Street, and I saw this lady walk up the road. I thought, it's a really interesting coloured outfit she's got on. Got closer, plug it, and she was absolutely Skin stark oh, naked. What? Like, really? Not a bee with a bag. Nothing. Zero. Did not a bag. bag. I bet she was younger she than was, I was. Though. She was walking. She was she, carrying a handbag. Uh, and she had contacts looking, in. and I went, okay, you got everyone's attention. Like, <laughs> not a bee. Yeah. Unbelievable. Okay. I love it. What's your worst habit? Um, forgetting to eat. Forgetting to eat. Oh, yeah, I, I forget to eat. I sometimes go a and day and a half. And then you go, boom, crash. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. I um, sometimes go a day and a half with that. Yeah, that, that's, probably my, that's probably my worst habit. I, 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 I reckon if I go an hour and a half oh, without right. food, I've got a problem. I know, everyone around me is like, that's probably my worst habit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my worst habit is <laughs> not there. having too many breaks. <laughs> okay. Right, who's, got who's been the biggest influence of your life? Pe person, people? Um, Oh, my dad yeah. has, has set my ethical, um, my whole ethical stature. Yeah. He's based on my dad. He was a doctor. And, um, and Richard Branson. I, I love him because he, he dreams big um, and he acts on it and he makes his dreams come true. And I, I just, I love the idea of that. Yeah, absolutely. I've Every done it in a very, 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 very small way. That's right. Yeah. Everything begins with a dream. You just got to back it up. Yeah. It's true. Watch out for Nikki's jets. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Nikki's tram. Yeah, why not? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, not Nikki's yeah, tram. Nikki's tram, tram, tram driving around Subiaco. <laughs> tram yeah. and a jet. Mm, okay, but that's, right. that's motor transport. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Um, when you're not at work, I think I know the answer. Where, when you're not at work, where will we? Where would we find you? Oh, it's a bit embarrassing to say this, but probably shopping. That's okay. Um, or playing my guitar. Could be worse. Could okay. be much Love worse. Playing your guitar and singing. See, so have you not? You know the answer to that. You guys always say the answer to this one, and you don't. You could have bought in the number next time. No, we need to source it. We need to find this it's out. It's mostly bit. for my own enjoyment and occasionally for other people's non enjoyment. Oh, okay. <laughs> Most precious belonging? Is your partner a belonging? We've debated this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> potentially yes <laughs> or, no, let's or take, potentially yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, let's take people I out. You tried to do the right thing by mentioning her. Uh, all of a sudden, I'll I was possessive. Down. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, to keep it as in that moment. Inanimate objects. Yes. Um, is that probably my, my my old cars. I love my old cars. Nice, that's that's good. nice. Like old cars. I know. I've got a real thing. What's your favourite old car? Um, well, I've got an E Type Jake to go oh. with the F Type down there, yeah, yeah. and an old Jeep. Nice. Renegade from the eighties. Oh, cool. very retro. Very yeah. cool. Nice. Yeah. Very and a Mustang. Beautiful. Like that. Old Mustang. Oh, what year's the Mustang? Hmm? You got a Mustang? Well, it's my partner's really, but okay. that's right. You can yeah. What's nice. his is here. What's his is yours and what's yours is yeah. yours. Yeah, we get that. I'm yeah. looking forward to this one, Ross. Okay, the gonna... most, we, we all get the sayings, you know, we get sick of people saying certain things. What's the most overused saying that when people say that does your head in? Oh. Going, going, going. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that one, that one is easy. If somebody says to me, to be honest, I just like. Yeah, which means they're not. It's like, what, what just, what just now? In, in the next thing, everything else isn't. <laughs> right, I, wasn't. I like that. Yeah, it's good. like, it just, but I hear it all the time. Yeah. And and it's, it's my fingers start twitching because I want like, you know, yeah. to be honest. Oh, okay. Let's okay. be honest just for now, a minute. Now okay. Now good the rest now. is lies. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Mine, mine is, my, my particular one is, um, it's an inexact science. Yeah. That's what you say. They hear the me time. a lot saying that to people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, it true. Is. Very good, thank Generally you. Is beautiful. There you go. Good work. Nice, back to you, nice Jeff. done. All right, final segment of the day, play of the week. 
Shano, I'm throwing to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for this, right? Week. So Nick, this, this is good. This is our um, something funny we've seen, something good we've seen, something... Or controversial. Controversial yeah, on social media. This is controversial, media. this one. Oh. Mm. Yeah. So, on the way here, mm-hmm. um, just, you know, finished an appointment, jumped back in the car, checked the phone, went on Facebook, and a good friend of all of ours, uh, Sean Hughes, believe he still has a property management department. No, I, I think he's I got think one. I think he does. Yeah. Small Sean company by the name of Real Mark. Yeah, 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 and yeah. then yeah. his beautiful fiance Sarah, I look online and she's fizzboing or privately leasing her own property. <laughs> yeah. So I just happened to say, look, I know a property manager, so I'm waiting for the response, both Sean and Sarah, to see why it wasn't run through Real Mark. I haven't seen any other ads but the Gumdy Marketplace ad. Yeah, I did see so that. You always get the good results from property managers, yeah, yeah, yeah. unless it's yours, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah, we'll see what he says about that one. Yeah. Would you ever throw one of your rentals through Facebook Marketplace instead of your PMs? One of my own personal ones, you mean? Yes. Um, no, because I couldn't be bothered. I, mean, <laughs> I, I couldn't. Um, fees but, must but be too much, really. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I still fees. charge you too much. I would defend, I'd, I'd defend the right for someone to do that if they wanted to. Even if they own an agency? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So when you go into somewhere, it's free world. It is free oh, world. It is a free world, absolutely. I just hope Sean knows. Maybe he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if he's the front of the bus, Husey, we've just chucked him under it. <laughs> um, all right, I've got a play of the week. My okay. play of the week this week goes to Paul Tonich. Congratulations. He's just announced his move to the agency. Um, but my nomination actually comes from his series of social media posts that he's been posting for the last couple of weeks. Very subtle hints mm. as to our... Uh, Discretion's not one of his strong move. points, I wouldn't have No. So, well done, Paul. <laughs> I'm not going there. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Best of luck with Paul. All right, guys. That is it. Well, well, that is it. Out. Well, it's, it's all done. Thanks for coming yeah. on. Lovely. Thanks, Thank you. Shane. Thank you. Thanks, it's for been us. Long. Thanks, Thank Jess. You. So I want to say another huge shout out and another big thank you to the team at Domain Hire and Property Styling for our beautiful set, set. once again. Always changing um, too. Posting yeah, us, they're always mixing it up. We love it. The, the African theme this week, kind of. Love yeah, it. Gosh, I love um, it. If you like the show, please share it with your family and friends. It's not just for agents, it's for everyone. So please tag them and, and let people know what's going on. Um, and we're going to step out of the western suburbs next week, I hope. So. Yeah. Um, if you have a hood highlight, a hood, a suburb that you want to nominate, chuck it in the comments. Yeah. Um, thank you again, Nikki, for your time today. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, our expert panel, Roscoe and Shane. Thanks for having Sweet. us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you same time, same place, two weeks. It's a wrap. It's, it's done. done. Bang. Woo. See ya. Thanks. It's done. Come on, Jess, do your thing. Yeah, go, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>